If you're looking for a simple NNN automation that can help you generate leads, then this video is for you. The way this automation works is simple. You just fill out a form describing the type of lead you're trying to find, and then it automatically scrapes Apollo, giving you the leads, email, LinkedIn information, and company information, and then records it all inside of Google Sheets. That Google Sheet database then looks something like this. You get their name, email, title, LinkedIn, company name, company website, company LinkedIn, and then it even gives you an AI summary. And I really love this workflow for a few reasons. One, it's simplicity. And two, it's really easy to build upon this. What I'm gonna show you is how to build what is essentially a lead generation skeleton where you submit a form, it gets all the data, it does some parsing with AI, and then it deposits it in a place like Google Sheets. But I'll also show you some other things you could do with this data on the back end, like enriching the data, like coming up with custom cold outreach and then actually sending off those emails. There's a million different ways you can iterate off of this base, which is why I love this automation. So let's dive into it right now. So the way we're gonna do this lesson is I'm just gonna go module by module, show you what's inside, show you what's under the hood, and then we're actually gonna to go to places like Apollo and Appify so you can see how it's actually working. And as always, if you want this template, it's inside the school community, so you can just upload it and get it working right away. Now onto the form submission. So here inside the form submission, you see there's a few things you as a user can fill out. You're gonna have the job title, the company size, some keywords, and you can add as many keywords as you want, and then your location. This, as you see in the output, then gets split up into a number of items that we then map into AI in the next step, to generate a search URL for Apollo. Now, why the heck are we generating a URL? What does that all mean? Well, let me explain. So what you're looking at right here is the inside of Apollo.io. Now you can go ahead and make an account at Apollo right now. It's free, although if you wanna actually use it for real and get a lot of data, you have to pay for it, which is why we use the automation that we use. Now, right here is essentially a dashboard or a place where you can search for leads. And here on this little screen is where you can put things like the persona you're trying to find, the number of employees of the leads you're trying to find, the location, the job titles, the company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have a bunch of different filters, which once run gives you what you see over here on the right. You know, we have a name, we have a title, we have a company, and you're able to access the emails, the phone numbers, and then it even goes into things like their LinkedIn. Now you could pay Apollo straight up to have access for all this information, but you would need to go into an Apollo and actually do all these things manually. And it's kind of a pain in the butt, especially if you're not someone who's gonna use the full amount of credits that Apollo gives you. For many people, they actually just need a small slice of that Apollo pie for their needs, and they don't wanna pay the whole subscription, which is where Appify comes in, which I'm gonna show you later, which is the tool we use to access this information on Apollo, right? Think of Appify as a secret doorway into Apollo's data that we can use to gather it. Now, talking about the search URL. So now this can be kind of hard to see, I'll do my best to zoom in, but here is what we're trying to create. This URL that I have highlighted right up here. If you're able to see it, essentially it goes app.apollo.io, blah, 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 blah. And then you have this large field at the end that has a bunch of different information. For example, it shows organization num employees range, right? And we put in a range there, person, location, Texas, organizations. Basically, every time I come in here inside of Apollo and change a filter, this URL changes. So every single Apollo search, every single lead search has a corresponding URL associated with it. And the way Appify works is we feed Appify this URL that we're trying to find. And then Appify on its own Apollo account does the search for us and gives us the data. Now, here I am inside of Appify. Now, if you've never used Appify before, it's essentially a giant marketplace for different sorts of web scrapers. You can use it for LinkedIn web scrapers, Facebook web scrapers, or in this case, Apollo web scrapers. And like I alluded to before, think of it as Appify has their own Apollo account that they're gonna use on your behalf. You just have to tell them what you wanna search for, and they're gonna give the data at a slight premium, but you don't have to pay all these different subscriptions to get access to all the scraped data. And at this example right here, we can see what this scraper is looking for. What it's looking for is this URL, right? This is the URL that you need to input in order to get that data from Apollo. And like I said, this URL changes based on the filters you want. What this automation needs to do at the beginning is we need a way based on what leads you want to generate a URL that we can give to Appify so it can scrape Apollo, right? 
you have leads, we need a URL, Appify gets that URL, scrapes Apollo, gives it to us. That's how it's working. So data is jumping from a lot of different places and I get that can be a little confusing. All you need to understand is that at the end of the day, we're ultimately getting the data from Apollo and we're using it through an intermediary known as Appify and they need the URL to do that. And so once you submit your form, that's why we go here to a basic LLM chain where we have the Apollo URL generator. And inside of the prompt, we give it the job title, the company size, the keywords, and the location. And you'll remember those are some of the same filters that we saw on the actual Apollo page. Now, next up is our moneymaker, the system prompt. And what are we seeing here? Well, we're saying, hey, you're an expert Apollo search UR generator, and your job is to take the data the user gives you in the form and turn it into an Apollo URL, right? We break down the type of data it's gonna get. We show it the type of URL, like essentially boilerplate looks like, you know, field one equals value one, et cetera. And then we give it an example, right? Here's some inputs and here's what the output looks like. So it now has a template of how it wants to manipulate things. Now, you might've seen way more filters on Apollo than you see here, right? We only have four different keywords or four different sections while Apollo itself had like 20. Like how do we bridge that gap? Well, we don't want this to be too complex, right? If we have this with like 20 different sections of a URL that it needs to know how to manipulate, it can get kind of crazy and it's not gonna be as accurate all the time. And we want accuracy. So what does a lot of heavy lifting here is the keywords parameters. So if you wanna add something that's not the job title or the company size or the location, like say the industry, well then you would just put that in the keywords and you can add as many keywords as you want. And so you fill out the form, it runs through this generator and you'll see over here on, in the logs on the right, it spits out the URL we want. As for the chat model, I'm just running 4.1, which is probably overkill to be totally honest. And now that we have the URL, now we can go to Appify and actually execute this. Now remember, this is all we're doing. We're taking that Apollo URL that was inside our web browser, and we're essentially copy pasting it into here in this URL section. Now you could do this manually, right? You could go to Apollo, find the URL you want, jump back to Appify, paste it in here, have it run it, get the outputs, but Obviously that's tedious and we wanna automate this whole process. So what we're automating is the ability to take that URL and send it to Appify. And the way we do that is with this guy right here. This is just a simple HTTP request. Now it's gonna be post and for the URL, it's gonna be v 2 act slash blah, 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 a million different letters and words and then run sync get data set items. Now, how the heck did I know to put that there? Well, it's inside the Appify documentation. We take a look here inside of Apollo. First of all, let's take a look at the URLs again, which is a big topic of today's video. The actor ID comes after actors backslash, and then you're gonna see a string of letters and numbers before slash input. That's the actor ID. And you'll see, jumping back in here, that's reflected here, act slash, and we have the ID. But they make it a little easier because if you come up here in the top right where it says API, and then we go to API endpoints, what we really wanna do is we wanna do this, run actor synchronously and get data set items, which means it's gonna run the, the, the scrape, it's gonna go get the data, and then it's gonna to wait to collect the data before it tells you, hey, everything's okay, and we're ready to go. And then it gives you the actual URL for that. Now, in this case, it shows the actual name of the ID, but the point is the same. And in here, it also includes your API key, which we're not going to include inside of the NADN version. But we simply replace the name with the letter ID, but everything else stays the same. And we just get rid of the token part. So that's how you figure out what URL you need to use. And this applies to other Appify actors as well. So that's how we found the URL. Authentication is going to be none. And then you're gonna use headers and we're gonna do two headers. The first one is, is accept application slash JSON. Again, be wary of capitalization in a white space. And then it's gonna be authorization bearer with a capital B space and then your Appify API key. Don't worry, I'll delete this one later. Now, how do you find your Appify API key? You're gonna go down to the bottom left where it's the settings and then API integrations. And this is where you can create or copy API keys you want. Now, let's talk a little bit about, about Appify and pricing. So Appify, 
does have a free trial, but if you wanna use the API stuff, you have to pay. It's $39 a month for the first tier. Now you'll also notice on Appify, let's go back to some of these actors, that there's a price associated with them. So for this Apollo scraper, it says $1.20 for 1,000 leads. Does that mean I'm paying $39 a month plus $1.20 every time I get 1,000 leads? No, that, doll, that $39 essentially acts as a credit that you can spend on different actors in the Appify marketplace. And while that may seem pricey, understand you have access to way more than just the Apollo scraper and you have stuff like LinkedIn and all sorts of things. And also it's cheaper than what the Apollo scraper, what the Apollo subscription itself would cost you on a month to month basis. Now, once you get your API key, you're gonna hop back into here, paste that in there. And then the next step is we just need to send the body. So we're gonna send the body as JSON using JSON. And this is what it's gonna look like. Personal emails, work emails, we want that. Total records has to be minimum 500. And then URL, this is where we map the URL we created down into here, right? So that's what's going on. Now, again, how did I figure that out? Well, it's literally just this, right? Right on the front page, you just copy paste this JSON into here and put that into your body. They make it really, really simple. And when you run this, so on this example, I was looking for FinTech founders in Texas and the keywords were like SaaS. I got 386 possible leads back. That's a ton of leads and it's also a ton of data. If you look over here on the right, and I'm just gonna scroll through it fast, you're gonna see all the stuff from just a single person. We're still on one person, just got to the second person. So this highlighted part, all one person. Well, sorry. This highlighted part as I go down is all one person's data because it's looking at a lot of stuff, not just their personal stuff, but also their organization and some sort of work history. And so the next step is gonna be well, what data out of that giant blob do we actually care about and do we want to put inside of Google Sheets? And I'll show you how you can edit it and which ones I chose. So let me take a moment to do a really quick plug for the Chase AI community on school. If you're looking to dive deeper into the AI automation space, whether that's to build agents of your own or create your own AI agency, this is the place for you. We have tons of guides of how to build all sorts of AI agents and automations, everything ranging from personal assistants to marketing agents to scrapers, and they're all here for you with the templates included. You also get to be a part of a thriving community of AI builders, and anytime you run into trouble, you have other members to assist you, as well as me personally. So go ahead and check us out, and I'd love to see you there. So right here, I have a limit because we have 386 items. I didn't want to parse through all 386 items for this demo. I just had it parse through 10. You could have this be any number you want. You could get rid of the limit entirely, and every time you run this, it just does all the leads it finds. But the next step is parsing the lead data. And again, we have a basic LLM chain. And this time I'm using 4.1 mini. So inside of here, I mapped a few things I thought was important. Basically, I'm taking the name, the title, the email, the LinkedIn, the organization name, the org website, and the org LinkedIn. That's what I'm grabbing here from all that information we got from the first person. Now, I had to manually do that. Basically, I had to go in here and let's say, you wanted more than it was just here. Well, you could easily do that. And let's say I wanted their photo because you actually get that information. I'd write photo and I'd find this photo URL and I would drag that in and continue that for as much additional information as you want to take from this Apollo treasure trove. But for me, I thought the big hitters were just like, hey, who are they? What's their title? Give me some contact information. Give me some emails and also tell me about their organization because I'm talking to founders. So that's the user message. And for the system message, as we see here, a lot of this is just extracting it and making it look nice. So I'm telling it where it can find the information and I'm telling it what I want the output to look like, right? I want everything to be an individual item so I can easily map it to different rows when we go to Google Sheets. And I not only have that here in the required output format, I also use a specific output format. So I did require specific output format. I did a structured output JSON parser. And then here I put an example of what I want the output to look like, which I think the structured output parsers are great, especially when you have follow on Google nodes or Airtable nodes and you want things to go into individual places. And so when we go back into here and you look on the right, you can see how much nicer this data looks, right? So for the first person, full name, email, title, LinkedIn, and I even have it included in a summary. So 
the AI is ingesting all this information and then just giving me like a one or two sentence overview that I can easily digest. And then from there, we're going onto Google Sheets. Now, remember, this is what the Google Sheets looks like, and we need to make it so every space is properly mapped so it knows where to put the name, where to put the email, where to put the website, et cetera. And so we have an append or update sheet. We simply connect our account, we pick the sheet we want, and then we just map the data. So I just took the full name, dragged it in here, took the email, whoop, took the email, dragged it in here. Now, this is important because even though it's not shown right in this automation, if you want to make this really robust, like a full outreach system, well, you're going to want to be able to like individually pick that email out the chain, right? And eventually send stuff off. Because if you look at some of my previous LinkedIn scrapers, like this guy right here, that's kind of what we did, right? Like we also did some company research on the back end, And then we did a huge combination with all the information we got from that individual. And we combined it with our personal like selling point to give them some sort of personalized value add when we eventually talk to them. And something like this gets you along that path. And again, this is super modular. There's a ton you can do with it. But going back to this, that's all that's happening here. We're just mapping data so it can very easily go inside a Google Sheet that we can read simply. And that's how this Apollo lead generation automation works. You submit a form, we create that URL, we send the URL to Appify. Appify then scrapes Apollo on our behalf gives us the data, we parse it, and we put it somewhere we like. Now with this tool in your toolkit, it's now up to you to figure out, well, what do I want to do with this data, right? Do I just want to send a generic email to all these guys I got? You could do that. But also remember, you have their name now and you have their company information. So you could do a few things. You could go do something like a Tavoli search on their company and get some really in-depth data on what they're all about. You could go back to Appify now that you know how to use it and scrape their LinkedIn because you have their name. And similar to this guy, you could do something like where you combine everything together into a personalized cold outreach email that includes stuff about you and what you sell and how it would help them as an individual. So I really love this automation. I think it's great, simple to use. And I think it really shows you how you can leverage something like Appify to get data on people you want to sell to. So, um, I hope this was fairly easy to follow. You might have seen up here on the top right the connection loss and was wondering what that was all about. Well, NNN's actually been down all day and I was lucky enough to actually have this automation with all the pin data and I could actually show you what was going on. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other Appify actors you'd like to see videos on and I'll see you guys around.